What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender rendering tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to kick off my series on how to create renderings inside of Blender. So as a lot of you know, rendering is basically the process where you can apply light to a scene um, in order to create more realistic images. So you're basically simulating the way light is going to interact with your scene in order to generate a more realistic picture. And so this series is gonna be dedicated to kind of walking you through those different principles so that you can get more comfortable working with rendering inside of Blender. As we move forward in this series, feel free to leave a comment down below with any questions that you might have. Um, I will try to answer those to the best of my ability. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this series is actually a series I've been really excited about doing um, because I've wanted to create something that's kind of start to finish. I think rendering is a little bit... Um it's one of those topics that's a little bit more difficult to teach than maybe modeling. And so I'm excited to get into some of these principles and kind of talk through some of this stuff. And I wanted to do something specifically broken out from the modeling, because I think these get rolled into modeling tutorials a lot of the time. This is really designed to teach you all of the principles that you need in order to create really great renderings. And so to start off, I think a lot of you know this, but rendering is basically the process where you take light and apply it to your scene. And so when you take light and apply it to your scene, what's gonna happen is your computer is going to simulate the way things are going to look um, once that light is created. So you can use this to simulate like sunlight bouncing off of light, uh, bouncing off of glass, or um, you can use this to create different shadows and other things like that inside of your models. And so to start off, let's talk about how to get to the rendering inside of Blender. And so you can see how I've taken, I've created a very simple scene. Basically what I did is I took a cube and I scaled it up and then I deleted the vertex on this corner. That gives me kind of a background or a wall back here. And then I've got a floor, I've got a cube, and then I've got another plane that's slightly above the ground over here. And I also have a light source. It's a very simple scene, but it should give us some of the information that we need in order to really work with this. So the first thing I wanna point out is how to get to the rendering inside of Blender. So the way that you get to rendering is in the upper right hand corner, there's these four options for the different kinds of viewport shading. And you can um, move between them. So you might have used these to go to like wireframe mode to see just edges, or um, this one right here only shows you the solids or the faces. This one will show you the different materials in here. And then the last one is the one that's going to activate rendered view. So when you click on this, you can see how this is going to create a rendered view for you. And so when you first do this, um, your scene may look something like this. So when you first do this, your scene may look really dark. And so the reason for that is because in order to really do any rendering, you need something that's going to create light, right? So it's just like being in a dark room, right? If you don't have any lights in the room, it's gonna look really dark. And so you can add lights as objects inside of Blender. So you can do that either by going up to add and going into light, or you can do a shift A and you can go down and you can add a light object. There's a number of different uh, light objects in here. I actually have some more that I've downloaded as well. But for right now, we're gonna focus on these first four. So, and we'll get into these more in a future video. So um, for right now, let's go ahead and add a point light. So what a point light is, is it's basically a light that is like a point in space that emits light. So it's an object that emits light in every direction. And so let's go ahead and let's move this up. So just G, Z, G, Y. So that this is kind of up in the air and then let's take a look at what this is doing. And I'll go ahead and turn my screencast keys on for you guys so that you can actually see those. Um, but you can see how what we have now, if you look at our scene with our rendering turned on, is you have a light right here that's casting light into your scene. And so what that light is doing is that's basically giving us the information so that we can kind of see what the different rays are doing. Um, so you can see how, for example, if we were to look at the back side of this cube, it's very well lit up because this is directly... Um, this is directly emitting light at this cube, where on the other side, 
if you look at this, it's very dark. And so it's very dark because the cube itself is blocking the light. And so what, what that means is that means that we get shadows on this face. Notice that this is kind of jumping around a little bit. That's not a huge deal right now. We can talk about that a little bit more in the future. But just know that your different lighting sources are going to be what generates things or what creates things like your shadows and other things like that. And so if we were to add a different kind of light, so let's say we were to add maybe like an area light instead, we'll move this up, we'll rotate this. You can see how this light casts light in a direction, right? So it's got like a, basically an area in here and this entire area is going to cast light. We'll go ahead and turn off our point light for a second. And so you can see how this cast light in a different way. So this is going to cast light based on the size of the object and the direction that it's pointed. So notice how I can click and drag this in order to adjust the direction that this is pointing. So there are just multiple different kinds of light in here that we can use. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one back off. We'll turn our point light back on. So just note that for a, your scene is going to need a light source. And then the next thing that's going to affect the way your renderings look inside of Blender is going to be the materials that are applied to your objects. And so the reason for this is because different materials interact with lighting in different ways. So for example, if you were to look around the room that you're in, you're gonna see a lot of different kinds of materials. So for example, if you see anything that's metal or metallic or chrome or anything like that, um, look at the way that the light bounces off of that, you can see how you get reflections. So that's the light rays bouncing off of those objects. Where if you look at like a cloth object in the same room that you're in, the light is more like absorbed by it. So you might get some very dim reflections or they might kind of look lit up, but they're not really reflecting the light rays. And so what happens is Blender is calculating the way that materials are going to interact with your light. So for example, let's say we were to take this plane and let's go over and click on the material properties. I'm just gonna add a new material to this. So let's go ahead and change the color to something like a red. So you're gonna notice if you change the color to a red, you can see how this adjusts in real time along with that. So the color is going to affect the way that this looks, but these other settings so these other settings are going to affect the way that this object is going to interact with your light as well. And we'll get into these in more detail in the future. But for example, let's say that we wanted this object to be more reflective. So we wanted it to reflect more light. Well, what we would do is we would change the value for roughness. And so if I was to take the roughness value and drag it up, you can see how the more I drag this up, the less I'm getting like reflections of the whiteness of the light in here. But if I was to drag it all the way to the left, you can see how I'm getting very strong reflections of this light. So if I was to drag this all the way to the left, for example, I'm basically getting a reflection of this circle on this surface. So by adjusting these different settings, we can adjust the way these surfaces are gonna interact with light in order to get a more realistic effect. So there's other things you can adjust too. So you can make this more metallic to make this look like metal. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do in here with that that we will get into in future videos. But just know that your materials are really going to drive the way that your rendering looks. And so now let's talk a little bit about the difference between Cycles and Eevee. So if you're using Blender 2.80 or above, I believe, um, you have two different kinds of rendering programs um, built into Blender. And so the reason for that is because there's a lot of calculations involved in simulating light inside a Blender or any 3D program. And so different engines do it in a different way. And so let me see if I can pull up the page just to show you what I'm talking about. So basically you have two different rendering engines. So Cycles is the older rendering engine. Cycles has been built in and basically what it does is what's known as path tracing. So it's a physically based path tracer. What that means is that means it actually goes in and it calculates how the light rays, each individual light ray is going to interact with all of the materials inside of your rendering. Um, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna calculate all the different light bounces and everything else, which is really great for getting realistic images. But the problem with that is it's very processor heavy, right? So um, what, what it means is it means your processor has to do a lot more math, basically. 
So that's one engine built inside of Blender. And you can find that by going over into your uh, scene settings and you can adjust your render engine to cycles. And so what you're gonna notice about cycles is if you switch over to cycles, this now gives you this kind of look where, where every time that you rotate your camera, everything goes kind of gray. And the reason for that is because every time you rotate your camera, this is recalculating the way that the light rays are going to look, which is great because you can see how I'm getting a better result. So for example, I'm getting a better reflection of my cube on this metallic sheet, but it takes a lot longer for it to actually generate this result. So, um, and another thing is you might get this little dotted or pixelated look. The reason for that is because it doesn't, it hasn't calculated what the light would do in those areas yet. And so it either doesn't have enough light to calculate that, or it just takes a long time for you to get a really smooth image. So the other engine that's built in is what's known as Eevee. And so Eevee, and all of this information is in the Blender manual, by the way, at docs.blender.org. But EV is basically what's known as a real-time rendering engine. And what a real-time rendering engine does is instead of ray tracing, if you look down below, what this does instead is it kind of approximates everything using something called rasterization. And so rasterization estimates the way the light is going to interact with your objects. So instead of actually calculating what the light's going to do, this kind of approximates it. And so there's pluses and minuses to that. The plus is that it's much faster. So if I was to go back to Eevee and move around, you can see how this is basically real time. Um, so I'm not having to wait for anything to load or anything like that. Um, but you can see how you're not getting the same result. Um, so for example, like this is kind of jumping around, but my box in here isn't showing the uh, reflection quite as well. So what it does is it's much faster, um, but it doesn't necessarily give you quite as good of a result from a detail standpoint. And so there's places for each one of these. So I wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other as much as I would say that each one has a different use. So you can switch between those by going to your scene and just setting your render engine to the different engines. So you can go either way with those, but you can find those inside of your scene. And we can talk a little bit more about the differences between those in a future video. But for right now, um, let's talk about how to export an image. And so first things first, if we were to go up and you can export your image by going up to render and clicking on render image, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a window where this renders out your image. But you can see how um, we have an issue right here, which is we're not really showing our scene very well. And so the reason we're not showing our scene very well is because even though we've been rotating around inside of our scene in Blender, what we haven't been doing is we haven't been adjusting our cameras. And so our cameras are going to be really important for the way that we create our renderings. So if I was to zoom out right now, you can see how we've got this thing kind of flying off into space. So this is our camera. And basically the view from our camera is what's gonna drive the way that our scene looks. And so you can see how right now this camera is looking at the scene kind of off to the side like this. So you can't actually see what's going on. And so what you need to do in order to get a better image is you need to move this camera so that it's actually looking at your scene right here. And so there's a number of different settings for your camera, which you can access by going into camera. Um, or you can also, um, so you can adjust everything from like your focal length and everything else. But just know that those camera settings are gonna drive your image. And that's really a good way to think about the way that you're rendering images is you need to think about this basically like a photographer. So you're setting up your lights, you're setting up your composition, and then you're setting up your camera. And so one real quick trip, trick about this, and we can talk more about cameras in a future video as well, is if you tap the N key in order to open up your menu over here and you click on the button for view, there's an option in here to lock your camera to your view. So what that means is that means you can check this little box and then if you type zero on your numpad, this is basically going to move your uh, active view into what your camera is seeing and then you can move your camera by adjusting your actual view in here. So what that means is you can actually preview what you're going to see inside of your rendering by moving this camera around. 
And basically everything inside of the yellow box is what's going to be shown inside of your rendering. So now, if we were to go up to render and click on render image, what that's going to do is that's going to create a rendering from that camera view inside of Blender. And so one last thing I want to do, and then I'll show you how to save your image, is I want to talk a little bit about the, the performance difference between Cycles and Eevee. So we talked about that a little bit, but you can see how this has Eevee currently activated. And so what that means is that means that final result is going to be created through the Eevee rendering engine. So if you look at this, so I'm gonna take a screen capture of this actually, just so we can kind of compare them. But um, let's take a screen capture here. Notice that it took less than a second to create this rendering. Now let's go back and let's set our rendering engine to cycles and then do the same thing. So if I click on render, click on render image, you can see how this is gonna go through and this is going to create a rendering, but notice that it's taking significantly longer than when we were, um, than when we used Eevee. So Eevee was able to spit that image out in less than a second. This is going through and it's rendering out your scene and there's different settings you can change in order to adjust this, but you can see how this is taking a lot longer, but it's also a significantly better result. So I'll kind of try to bring these in side by side as best as I can, just so you can look at them. There we go. So if you look at these two images, what you're gonna notice is um, other than the slight graininess, which I would need to add some more lights to this scene in order to get rid of, you can see how while over here, I'm getting very, I'm getting some results that aren't very detailed, right? Like you can't see a very good reflection of my cube on the left-hand side. Um, and this is just kind of like a straight line through here. This material gets very non-reflective. So you're, you're just not getting the same subtleness of your lighting in the EV rendering that you got from your cycles rendering. You can see how the cycles rendering, you get the reflection of your cube right here. So you just get a better um, result if you're looking for things right like things like reflections and other things like that. There are some things you can tweak in Eevee to get a better result, but just note that while the Eevee result took under a second, it gives me a different result than the cycles render. And so sometimes we're gonna use cycles, sometimes we're gonna use Eevee. It really kind of depends on what we're trying to do, but just know that they're different and that there's a time and a place for each. And then once you're done with this, you can just go up to image and click on save or save as in order to save a copy of your image um, for use later. So you can use this image once it's been rendered. So you can just do a file, save as, and save that as an image file. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. We will get into all of this more in depth in future videos, but I wanted to give you kind of an overview of the way that rendering works inside of Blender. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, if this was helpful to you. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you have any questions, leave those down below as well. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.